With the rise of the Bleach series since its announcement in 2020, much of the community and fan base has been left in the dark specifically around about what precisely us as the Bleach fans can expect in the future and what really we can just look forward to in general. With of course popular questions like, will the anime be good? Will there be censorship? Will it be seasonal or ongoing? Will the light novels be adaptated? Will we get the Thousand Year Blood War flashback? Will we get a new generation? Will Burn the Witch get Bleach cameos? And will the manga continue? All these questions are valid and questions that I myself have as well. But with that being said, more questions are better than no questions. Since the Bleach manga ended in 2016, there was only one question. Will the Bleach anime return? And that's the only question that many fans cling to and the only straw we could grasp onto. With hindsight, that one answer of yes became the biggest fortune in this roller coaster. Yet the biggest anxiety. I've answered many questions in this video already, but the one I want to focus on is, can, no, will Bleach continue? Does this stem from the last chapter of Bleach? Not at all, but it does solidify an already popular question. Kubo came with a one-shot chapter that, the last page and editorial note alluding to the continuation aside, let's address why this seemingly is the case. Bleach's anime and manga context will be intertwined within this video. So let's talk about what content we have in story order. 200 plus chapters of the Thousand Year Blue War arc, the light novel and spin-off six months after the events, Can't Fear Your Own World, then three years after the events, We Do Not Always Love You, two chapters of the 10 year time skip and one chapter of two years following up in advance. Coincidentally the same time that the Burn the Witch manga storyline starts. If we take this at face value, that's a good two years of solid anime content give or take, if Bleach was not a seasonal running anime at a minimum. But is there more to it? Let's talk business. A pillar of jump being One Piece is ending. Jujutsu Kaisen, My Hero Academia and Black Clover are nearing their ending too. With the recording of this video, Jump has very little for their disposal for keeping a consistent viewership or readership. After these series come to their climax, it seems that Shueisha needs an incentive and a big one. Dragon Ball, Yu-Gi-Oh and Boruto are already incentives for readers for V-Jump, so they wouldn't really be applicable in this sense. There are a few things which are important, little things but important nonetheless. However, the biggest asset for this video is a little website called Club Outside. It was to my understanding that this fan club was designed to be a year long service, considering at the start of its run, it was considered limited. You could pay monthly or you could pay for a year, which came with perks. The foundation for this site was Sharon Kubo's his online thought diary, sharing drafts, music tastes, and more importantly, his Q and A session. That alone is limited. How long and how much content can you truly have to justify its high price point? As time would go on, only the Q&A section and the art posts would be the only relevant reasons for fans to use it. However, the site has expanded since. It's opened up a store, and in order to have a store, you need things to sell. Creating a movie tab, with this movie tab only displaying one video of Kubo drawing a page from the last chapter. But here's the kicker. These two tabs rely on one simple rule. New content. Without new content, these new pages are redundant. No new Kubo drawings means no merchandise to sell at the exclusive store. Keyword, exclusive. Jump stores will always sell their Bleach merchandise, but in this case, it is exclusive that you can only get from this website. And of course, the movie page needs more Kubo footage, meaning new video material. The point of the matter is, this website is only as relevant as there is more Bleach manga material. This website has not been used for any anime content as of yet and stays true to the name of the club being a fan club for Kubo. That being said, for a website bringing in at least a million a month with subscriptions and merchandising sales, this is a club that is extremely profitable. But let's be a bit more speculative. Editor-in-chief Nakano was the one that brought Kubo back. He saw Burn the Witch and voluntarily asked to publish it. Kubo has stated that in season 2 and beyond that he will keep Burn the Witch and Bleach separate but will incorporate each other in the story. Very conveniently as he has now made Bleach and Burn the Witch existing in the same time frame, telling me that the actions in Bleach will have an effect in the world of Burn the Witch. And in order to intertwine these two series, you of course need new content. In the Bleach Jet art book, he made time skip designs of Kazuya and Ichika and thus, from the context of the last chapter, he opened up a new arc. For business and for story, Bleach has set itself up to be here 
for a really long time. In conclusion, this is my theory and my opinion and perspective on what I think, keyword think, we will have. We will have our Bleach Thousand Year Blood War anime and then we'll get animated versions of the light novels which has already had voice actors in preparation. We could have We Do Not Always Love You thrown in that mix as well. We could have a Dragon Ball Super situation where Shueisha and Kubo can write exclusive mini stories or movies filling in between the seven to 10 year time gap. Then we'll have the last chapter, then, we've possibly even more short stories that Kubo will want to show for the anime exclusively until the Hell Arc. This is a great time for Kubo to write Burn the Witch and the Bleach Hell Arc seasonally if he chooses, while the anime has a selling point for new material. This is literally the most perfect scenario you can get and the most realistic. Kubo can take his time, manga can be made that doesn't detriment his health, and he can be involved with the anime without overworking himself. While Shueisha and the anime can market films and give exclusive in-canon filler to entice old and new fans to watch. And to entice us old fans as well to enjoy the anime and still get us discussing and excited for it at the same time without knowing what's going to come next. Could the new logo that Kubo's making be for the anime? Or could it be for the manga? That's an interesting question that we will have to wait on for now. But for now, I am actually going to have to end it off here. Tell me your guys' thoughts, of course, in the comment section down below of what you think is going to happen. And with that being said, I'm going to catch you more folks like you guys, of course, have this fine day. I've been Hanson, and as always, people, peace out.